and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Gruel Aggro. We're starting um, a kind of a newish Gruel Aggro deck here with the with a new format with Theros Beyond Death. If you're watching one of the earlier videos, you may have noticed that we had Jeskai Giants up here. We're going to move Jeskai Giants to tomorrow. The leagues have been kind of long. We just have time for one more deck for tonight. And we did a poll in Twitch chat and people voted on Gruel Aggro. So we'll move Jeskai Giants to tomorrow during our 12-hour stream that's starting at noon Eastern. Um, so yeah, so we got we got a couple of new cards. We got Tectonic Giant, a card that I'm super excited about. Um, well, a card that I just think is just a really good, strong card. And then also this Clothis. You know, like whenever Clothis was previewed, a lot of people were kind of going crazy, thinking that it was awesome um and you know thinking it was going to be really really good and uh i'm not so sure but basically i wanted to try it out you know i want to kind of make a clothes deck like now i only got a couple of copies so we're not going like you know full out here but um sometimes clothes will be a creature you need your devotion to red and green be at least seven so you know kind of combined it it has two devotion uh, like one of red one of green so you only need five other devotion so i'd be like one like a goblin um and a spell breaker and a paradise druid in play that will turn on clothes for example um but you know like this is something that like maybe maybe against uh decks with a lot of removal and sweepers and stuff like that clothes can kind of just sit back as an enchantment also and and uh you just exile any card from a graveyard each turn and if it's not a land you deal two damage to the opponent, you gain two lives. You know, that can <clears throat> that can add up, especially when you have a whole bunch of, like, haste creatures and other ways to do damage. We also have the four Fable Passage in the deck to turn on the mana ability with Clothis a little bit. Uh, besides that, um, yeah, Tectonic Giant I think is awesome, but it, it, it Tectonic Giant is a little slow. You know, it doesn't have haste, but I think it's just a really good quality card. Sideboard, though, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited about our sideboard against, like, removal-heavy decks. You know, like, we can turn this into a lot of haste. We can bring in Phoenix of Ash, a card that I think is just pretty awesome. I really like Phoenix of Ash, and we're going to be bringing it in, in the sideboard here. Um, Ceratops against Counterspell decks, but also gives us a haste threat if we want to replace Tectonic Giant with Ceratops against Control decks. But then also Ox of Agonus, which is a threat, you know, it's a creature that can also just be a draw three. If this is the top end of our curve and we empty our hand before playing Ox, then we can just play the Ox and draw three. And it's also a recursive threat. They can come back. I mean, you do, I mean, eight cards is a lot to escape, but it is a recursive threat that can come back. Um, <clears throat> so besides that, against creature decks, I, I got the full four Domri's Ambush in the main. We got four Lava Coils in the sideboard to bring in, you know, Bone Crusher Giants also. So we got a good amount of removal there. And then for more removal, we bring in a couple Voracious Hydras. All right, so let's let's give this a try. Let's see how this kind of newer look Gruel Aggro does. We'll play over in Ranked. We're going to play five matches. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to try this out. I think this deck's going to be pretty decent for... Uh, right away metagame like we got. What are y'all doing in chat? I'm just typing random card names into the chat. Man, this this curve is like perfect. Hey, Whopper Stopper. Uh, Galia? I'm not sure what Galia is, Lenziller. Oh, the, the two drop? Um, anyway, uh, what, what am I putting back? Uh, Spellbreaker. Because I guess I would rather curve into Tectonic Giant than into Spellbreaker. All right, yes, stop putting card names in the chat. That is not, it's not appreciated. Hmm. 
Hmm. I do need to worry about just a sweeper. That I guess that's the thing about tecton Tectonic Giant here. Obviously, we didn't know what we were playing against whenever we made our mulligan decision. But... Considering could just have sweeper... Let's just play this. What, what does the Galia card do? How does Galia refill late? I'm not I just don't know how that how that works. Fake Horn Lover. But yeah, so I I really like our so you know we're playing against Esper Control. I really like our sideboard for this matchup. Ooh, not Esper Control. That Cavalier Dawn's gonna be a problem to deal with. What? Samantha? Oh no, I didn't. You just went 7 0 with the Ayara Citadel deck. That is awesome. Good job. Yeah, okay, yeah, that card. No, I, I honestly, I don't... I don't know, honestly. I'm not... I'm not convinced that card is better than... than just having a 3-3. Two mana, 2-2 two, two haste. I think there's times that you want to haste, but I think a lot of time... having a 3-3 three, three would be nice. Alright, well, this game just went horribly wrong for me. It's Cavalier of Dawn. This might be a bad idea. Wrecked me pretty good. Howdy, why are you, why do you keep on just putting card names into the chat? I don't understand what you're doing, but it just clogs up the chat for other people trying to interact with the stream. The Cavalier of Dawn's gonna be really difficult to deal with, honestly. That's that's the card that from like what they played, like that's the card that I'm really scared about. It's the one I'm really scared of. Yeah, four six is pretty big. So Phoenix can fly over. I needed not to play Questing Beast like when I did, but obviously this isn't like a Tectonic Giant matchup. Thing is, is I, I don't usually like Ember Cleave in this kind of matchup, but like maybe you have to have Ember Cleave to get through that 4-6. But I, I usually wouldn't want to play Ember Cleave. Drawing Paradise Druids late like we were doing also isn't great. Like I don't want to... Like I, do, I want Paradise Druid on turn 2 like we had Paradise Druid on turn 2, but then drawing the 2nd and 3rd later on is really not good.
That's what I'm thinking. Maybe keep these ambushers that can maybe kill the 4-6. I don't, I don't know. Four six is just going to be a problem. If my opponent didn't have, I mean, honestly, I should maybe be playing the ox this matchup, but it's it's kind of like four control. That's what's in here for. So the satyr is. This the new Seder that's the two mana two two haste. Is it <clears throat> It's if you attack with three creatures? Maybe that is better than Goblin. Cause they if you have two of them then they make each other three threes. I only have like three of these slots anyway though, but maybe it is. So we I'm I'm playing twenty-five lands in this version. You've seen some gruel aggros not play that many lands. I'm playing twenty-five. <laughs> One of my two temples. Good land. Yeah, I feel pretty good about the the Phoenix. I, mean, I wish we would have had that Phoenix out earlier. Hmm. I wish we didn't miss our second land drop, but it is what it is. You see a life gain aggro? Not sure if there's a good Life King aggro. I guess we have a donation deck tomorrow that's like an Orzhov hero that does have a, a good amount of Life King stuff in it. It's a better card than Tectonic Giant for this matchup. Yeah, Selesnia is my favorite guild. Yep. I know my response. Uh, Don't worry. I got this. All right, they can't bounce. All right, can't bounce.
I'm glad they haven't played a 4-6. Glad they never did that. Thanks, Baloney Pony. Boo. Excellent time. Oh man, we are one short. One mana short of Phoenix plus Castle Embereth. Hmm. Never mind. Phoenix has an ability. Right. Forgot about that ability for a little bit. I was like, what should I do? I'll just pump the Phoenix. Dude, Phoenix is great. And <laughs> the card has text. <laughs> Surprise. Cards have text. Phoenix is pretty great. All right, yeah, I should probably, I should still play Ox. Maybe I just take out Clothis. I think against normal control would be kind of good, but against Doom Foretold, it is not very good against Doom Foretold. We are kind of forcing them to have Doom Foretold, though. Because without Doom Foretold, Clothis can do some good stuff, but against Doom Foretold, it's not good. So Ambush and Embercleave <clears throat> are a couple of my worst cards. They're basically in to try to help me kill the 4-6. Or get through it. Sorry, excuse me. Can I just take out some Bone Crusher Giants. Card's not special, anyway. Doesn't have haste. Dies to Othakaya. Draw some spells. I'm probably not playing that before I'm playing the Ox. This Omen of the Sea is, is really solid. I don't remember what I gave it for a rating, but I probably underrated it. want to draw something else to play next turn and not just draw land and then I'm just like looking at Ox and discarding this whole hand. Okay, well, I can't play Ox anyway. Um, I think I just let this Doom Foretold go. Don't think I fight it.
Uh, what I take out for Ox? Um, I took out a couple of Bone Crusher Giants. <clears throat> Another Doom Foretold. Uh, this is Sparta, well, While Oceana Sleeps is the name of the song. gonna keep the land in hand also in case they kill phoenix so like because if if i play the land and then they kill phoenix then i have to discard ox Discard Ox to Doom Foretold, that is. Yeah, good chance that, yeah, they have, they have an Omen in hand. I could definitely see that. Flash in an Omen, sacrifice the Omen. No, it looks like they're going to have to sacrifice one of these two. I think, they're, I think the trigger is resolving right now. I wonder if they thought they could just sacrifice the token. There's no way, right? There's no way they thought they could sacrifice the token, right? I'll take that trade. Questing bees for Liliana. Bad, bad auto tap. Yep, that's why it was a bad auto tap. Pelt collector. I mean, I I could have not played that so fast and. Doom Foretold could let you sacrifice tokens that would be banned instantly. I mean, it, it would make it worse. Because when you're playing against it, you could sacrifice tokens. It'd make it a lot easier. I don't know if that would make it worse, honestly, because then you build your deck around it. But... Um... I don't know how I'm winning this, but I don't think it's with blocking right there. See if I would have... If I would have played the Pell Collector last turn, then I could have gone Goblin plus Phoenix.
And then these pelt collectors would be, uh, they'd be three threes because I'd have the two two phoenix and then goblin. That was a big deal with that tap. <clears throat> Calyx was great in the enchantment deck. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I really liked it. All right, at least we got the four six out of there. You know, they get another dupe told. The ox is back. We're at 17 life. It's absurd. Never mind. That was not a good idea. Yeah, enchantment deck was pretty good. Yeah, like the there's a lot of uh, really good card advantage with the enchantments. The enchantments are pretty strong um, because of that, and you get to play lots of lands and get a lot of card advantage and just have a really good late game. I was really impressed how we outgrinded Teamer Adventures a couple of times, even with Teamer Adventures having strong hands. So that was impressive. We're pretty close to dying at any time. They just have another Othakaya or a Teferi to bounce it. <laughs> Hasn't been barking yet. Okay, or they just have a dance, I'm dead there also.
Yeah, good hands. Good hands. Oh, and one. Two, they, you know, that second Doom Foretold, then Cavalier of Dawn. You know, going... That's that's tough to beat. You know, two Doom Foretolds, then Cavalier. Yeah, I was dead. They got to draw millions of cards. I discard my Ember Cleave. Alright, slow hand, but we're on the play, so that's okay. And they put two two twos out there. And they scry a ton, also with their millions of cards. We have we have no chance of winning. Okay, a mono white Daxos deck. This is my first time to play against a Daxos. I'm just getting another forest out of the deck. Yeah, could play Spellbreaker here. It's not like that big of a of a difference. All right, so they have the ideal curve. At least what I assume is the ideal curve. Enchantment creature, enchantment creature, enchantment creature. One, two, three. Honestly, I, I didn't think they were going to be blocking there. I think they, I thought they were going to just take it. So if I, if I go haste, we got 14 damage. If I do counter, and then that, it's 13 damage. So what did I say, the other one? So it's, because that's 10 plus 3 is 13. So we do that, it's 13. If I haste it, then we have 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we get one extra point of damage if I haste. Which, honestly, I think... I think I would rather have a counter on Spellbreaker for finishing the game instead of one damage. I don't know, I guess that's basically the same thing. I guess that finishes the next turn. Finishes the game the next turn the same either way. Yeah, Embercleave is... Very powerful. Well, best equipments they've printed in a long time. You know, I can't, I can't think of like the last equipment better than Embercleave. I didn't miss Lethal. I counted out. We would have dealt one extra damage if I would have, if I would have played Spellbreaker. We would have dealt one extra point of damage. Spellbreaker does three, but then we would have done two less because of Pell Collector. Would not have grown. Would not have grown. So we we didn't miss Lethal. So I'm gonna be playing the Lava Coils.
and the Hydras. So I don't know about this Clothis card. Doesn't exactly seem like something I need. Take out Goblin and Cloithus and The feeling Selesny is going to be OP. I, I don't know. I don't really have that same feeling. I, like maybe Abzan is like the way to go with that kind of deck. But yeah, I mean enchantments are definitely good. Like they they really push the enchantments, just like they push the adventure creatures, just like they push the elementals. They just keep on doing the same thing. Each of these sets. They're just kind of making pre-con decks for us. They're like, alright, play your Satessan Champion and jam all your enchantments together. Or play your Edgewall Innkeeper and jam all your adventure creatures together. It's pretty boring and rudimentary, but it's really good. Steadfast Queen, so this is whenever a creature you control attacks, you gain a life. Alright. <laughs> Give us Black Lotus in standard. Hey, K Control! Thanks for the sub. Oh, I'm gonna have to refresh my chat, so I'm gonna leave the chat for just a second. My hypos are gone. I don't know why that's like a bug, but sometimes they just leave. There are 24th of today. Ambush is pretty good. This just in. All right, Tectonic Giant. Unloaded. No, my giant exiled. Can't hold down a good tectonic giant, though. Give me a new card. <laughs> 
They're trying to hold back a good tectonic giant, but you can't do it. <clears throat> you can't do it. Alright, this is gonna get silly now. <laughs> they got this one. Attack with Heliod, what are you doing? Heliod, attack with this. It's indestructible. You gain another life. Attack with this next time. I'm trying to tell my opponent to attack with it. Attack. Like, they're winning, you know, obviously they, they won this game. Yeah, he looked really good that game. <clears throat> Got to go a bunch of stuff. I mean, it was really a, like Elspeth Conquers Death. Elspeth Conquers Death looked really good. Hmm. Is Hydra better than Bone Crusher Giant? Maybe. Better than Spellbreaker? Maybe. I don't have any, like, way to get Heliod off the battlefield. I don't know, I don't know if there is any way to get Heliod off the battlefield in Gruul. I don't think there is, anyway. Yeah, I sighted out Clothis. Oh yeah, the G put enchantment on the bottom of the library instant. That new card. That would do it. I hope they do not have Heliod. I do not want to see Heliod. Please don't have it. They had the other two games. They can't have it three games in a row, right? Isn't that a rule? Ugh. Well, never mind. That thing just kills me anyway. Twenty-five land deck. Why can't we draw lands? And we even scryed to the bottom. We had a scry land.
Alright, so I could have ambush kill the pride mate with questing beast. Seven. If they didn't block up, I was going to play the Bone Crusher Giant, but they did block. So we'll kill the Healer's Hawk, which kills the Daxos. And they just they ran out of gas. The, you know, they didn't have anything else the last couple turns that really helped us. Yeah, Shadow Spear could maybe fit in this deck, give you some lifelink. Shadow Spear is pretty cool. It's an interesting card to, to have. As like a, a one of in the sideboard against uh, other kind of other aggro matchups. Yes, giant does trigger. If if I would if I would ambush my giant, I would take two damage. Because I'd be casting a spell that, that targets the giant. Oh yeah, shadow spear has like an ability too. It can kill gods. That's true. Yeah, the Daxos only had one, or the Daxos had three damage on it because it blocked a 3-3 and it had four toughness. But whenever I killed, because its toughness was equal to its devotion to white, whenever I killed the 1-1 one, one Healer's Hawk, they lost one devotion to white. So then the Daxos toughness turned into three, but it had three damage on it. So that's why it died as well. Twenty-five lands just isn't what it used to be. Azorius Flyers. I'll stop stomp the life linker. Eagle's a good one. So we could be dead. If they have Rally of Wings, we die. <clears throat> kind of my, my plan is just haste that thing and next turn haste the other two. And... It's not the best plan. I have a lot of things that would kill it. Or a lot of things that would ruin my plan. Safara ruins my plan. It wasn't the best plan.
they obviously have lethal in the air. I got to make Clothes a creature, though. So that's cool. <clears throat> sure. Sure. Ceratops could have reach. Phoenix has flying. Better than Goblin and Spellbreaker? Maybe not. No, let's just go Goblin Spellbreaker. All right, here we go. Clothis has been pretty unimpressive. Twenty five land deck, please draw lands this time. Please draw lands this time. <laughs> Yay. They're just attacking in. I think I'll trade Paul Collectors for Loyal Pegasus. <laughs> and Clothis was the only card I said word up when you said. As far as I know. I mean. Pretty sure that's all. Two, three. So it looks like they miss a land drop. People usually use refrain to mean to stop doing something. Yeah, pre prevent yourself from doing it. Yeah, that works. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I play Questing Beast, their best block is on a Pelt Collector. They take 
7, 10, 12. They go to 1. So I don't kill them. Then they have 5 back where it's very likely that I'm dead on the way back. I was certainly hoping they were going to block so then they couldn't attack with this other Pegasus. I'm not dead to their Lord now. They could still have the, they could still have Rally of Wings that kill me. But now I'm not dead to the, the two, three flyer. Wish we had two red. Like my failed passage needed to be a red, but at the time I didn't realize that. Time we just had forest stomping ground. I think. I don't know. I remember. All right, game three. Yeah, all, oh, I guess I sideboard out Tectonic Giant also, so yeah, all, all the new cards are in the sideboard. Yep. This card hasn't seemed very good. The Phoenix seemed really good, though. So Goblin hits for three. They're basically hitting for four right now by deal two, gain two. Huh. Holding up negate, are we? I guess Rally of Wings? Could be Rally of Wings also. They certainly they they have an instant. Cause they didn't just fairy guide mother. Well that was the worst case scenario. But I wanted to do that on their turn to try to prevent them from playing the 8-8. Yeah, I didn't want them to play the 8-8. Maybe I save that because Questing Beast can kill the 8-8. Um, mm, this thing's not trample. That was the worst case scenario though of, of rally of like rally of wings happening like that. That that obviously really hurt.
Hey, foreign kite. Good evening. Yeah, they got this one. That rally of wings. Well, maybe we get lucky. We need them not to have Spectral Sailor. Did I give that thing lifelink? Did they gain life from that somehow? I don't think so. Ugh. Yeah, there's still a lot of ways to pump that thing. Third. Rally of Wings. That's a good card. So I needed to... I guess, yeah, the, if I would have Bump Crusher on my own turn, that could have been a different story. I mean, not really. They just wouldn't have played it and played out a bunch of other small creatures and still killed me with it later. So that, that enchantment does give them lifelink also. Yeah, it is pretty that is pretty powerful. All right, one and two. Let's see how close this is this time. We're on the play? No, we're on the draw. Yeah, never on the play. Never on the play. This means I'm definitely going to have to shock with the stomping ground, but... I don't want to just have my turn three land come into play tapped. Maybe that's not the worst thing with goblins. Yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of Fable Passages because of the Cloithus. Cloithus. Car was going to get me eventually anyway. I don't think I. I don't think I just don't block, even though that's a possibility. I mean, obviously, if they have Embercleave also, if they, you know, had this set up plus Embercleave on the play, I mean, I'm, I'm dead. It's not like I'm going to be doing anything about it. Pulp Collector would be more valuable to keep around than Goblin, so that's why those blocks were made. Remember when this was previewed, people were saying that this was going to be the new Oko. 
It's not close. Yeah, it was like one of the one of the early cards previewed. Our 25 land deck does not like hitting land drops. It really doesn't. Alright, get that thing out of here. Other sideboard options, you know, like you could have Flame Sweep in this kind of deck. I, I don't, but that's. You know, that's could be an oversight. You know, these last couple of matchups, having Flame Sweep would be really good. There's, of course, the new four mana Wrath that you could play as well. What are Kendis, what's going on? What's going on? Um, all right, sideboarding out four cards. Just kind of trimming down on some different stuff. All right, Paradise Druid, save us. Yeah, I haven't had any issues whatsoever today with the with the with the client disconnecting. I've had zero. Um, I know they did a patch last night that was supposed to help it, and said I haven't seen anything. I don't know how long Sealed's going to be around. I'm scared they're going to kill Paradise Druid, which is why I like making Goblin a 3-3 to, to, to incentivize them to kill the Goblin instead. If they had a removal spell.
Hmm. Yeah, I know. We could just never find our like third or fourth land in our twenty-five land deck. It just never happens. So we're going to just put the pressure on them with them having Stormfist Crusader that makes them lose life also. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it through 12 hours tomorrow. I'm going to get it. I'm going to have to get a good night's sleep tonight. You know, we're a little over six hours tonight, and I'm starting to, you know, I'm kind of struggling here. I mean, they definitely have Blacklands Paragon that they want to block my Questing Beast. I think that's definitely happening. All right, Snake Spur. Have a good night. You know, it could just be another Noxious Grasp. Nothing. It's going to be a close game. There's Noxious Grasp. Ooh, that's good. Tapped out. Don't have to worry about Blacklands Paragon. Clothes, unfortunately, has not looked good at all. Alright, so Spellbreaker. Put the fourth put that fourth counter on the Pell Collector to give it trample, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, they, they blocked the two trample creatures. Take more damage. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think the the, the hype for Clothis was because it was the first 
god that was previewed. I mean, I also, I mean, also against aggro. I, I mean, I drew it. I drew it both game ones against these last two aggro decks, and it wasn't, it wasn't good e there either. Like, I never had time to play it, and it was just a dead card in hand. You know, like the blue white deck flew over the top. The Rakdos deck didn't have time to play it. And then yeah, against and then yeah, we just played against Doom, and then it just didn't match up well against Doom Foretold. So even though theoretically it'd be pretty good against Control, but Doom Foretold um, shut it down pretty hard. But yeah, if, if it was non Doom Foretold Control, it would have been better. But honestly, like, I don't know if it's, that's better than... I mean, we still have, like, just, like, Phoenix. Like, I don't... Even against Control, I don't know that Clothis is better than just Phoenix. Same mana cost, same set. I think Phoenix is better. Get. Let's get green. All right, having removal for those things is pretty good. It's not good is Rotting Regisaur. Because that followed up by an Ember Cleave is pretty rough. Normally I don't really like attacking Questing Beast into Rotting Regisaur. I like like making them discard, but because of Ember Cleave, kinda have to just attack into it also and just trade. Before. interesting So now I don't have to be worried about Ember Cleave, so I could just make them discard. Like, besides top deck Ember Cleave. But because we have a backup questing beast and that unlocks like a lot better attacks for me, I'll just go ahead and trade. Alright, two and two. Let's play one more match tonight. Yeah, even the Gruel Aggro deck has been an hour 20 minutes with four matches yeah it's just i guess it's just basically five two hours for five matches these days yeah that fourth land was a really clutch that's a good call that fourth land that we drew was was really clutch
We're always on the draw. Never the play. I honestly don't have any advice for Theros Draft. I haven't played any and haven't haven't looked at the limited format at all. So I'm sorry, I don't have any advice. Gruel Mirror Breaker. Take my land, add some mana. Galia. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have played this because then they get the land. So likely they play any permanent, and then Clothis can be a creature attacking with other stuff. That would count. Right, I'm one short. Right. One short. Hydra may be a little small. Let's just play coils. Even Tectonic Giant. Maybe it's a tad slow. My mana base, though, you know, hurt us quite a bit that game of not having turn one Pell Collector. Like that's honestly probably why we lost of not not having turn one Pell Collector. Because yeah, if we would have had that. It would have grown, dealt more damage than our Cleave that last turn was most likely lethal. We got a really great curve. A one, two, three, four. Do need a fourth land. Oh, I'm sorry, Lick. You're feeling feverish as well. I'm sorry. Just 
just the mirror match. Everything I have, they have too. So, of course, the plan is questing Beast, Ember, Cleave. We'll see how effective that plan is. That's the plan. Hopefully no more removal. That's a good sign. This mirror, you block, you die. That's basically how it works with Gruul. Whoever, whoever's the person that has to block dies. If we were on the, if we were on the uh, draw that game, we would have lost. But we were on the play, we won. So we'll see how this goes. No, I haven't, Titus. No, no, I haven't played with her against the uh, any key, untapped Lotus Kiora deck. All right, so we both mulliganed. I have two temples in the deck. I didn't play like I'm not playing the full four. I just have two. Spellbreaker. Do I play Spellbreaker or do I play Bone Crusher Giant? I think I play Spellbreaker. Hey, Encrypted Mine. We've, we've played some sweet decks today. Yeah, we've played some sweet decks today. All of them, you know, enchantments. Demir Merchant was was pretty cool. All right, I put Embercleave Forest down to the bottom. I don't really want to draw Embercleave or Forest, so I guess we just go this route. Don't know if I'm supposed to attack or not. I don't know if I'm supposed to like trade four damage for four damage. Like I attack, they don't block, they attack back. Like if I attack, they don't block, they play like questing beast attack back. I'm kind of in trouble. I think I don't attack. I could be playing Gruel wrong there. You know, that could be the wrong way to play Gruel. Now I wish I would have attacked.
So could have shocked this turn and not given them the, the option for that, but yeah, they want to gain the two life. We could be dead. If they have their own number cleave, I'm dead. That doesn't kill me yet. All right. Three and two. All right, moving on up. Yeah, green white enchantments went five zero. That that deck felt pretty good. Like just the the enchantment stuff. There's a lot of a lot of good stuff going on there. That was definitely was the most powerful feeling deck. Yeah, as we saw there that last game. So my opponent played Clothis, and they were like, they were they were ahead on the battle. You know, like they they were basically ahead on the battlefield when they played Clothis. But all Clothis did was just sit back. It couldn't attack or block, and just twice it dealt. Two and then gain two. Twice. So, you know, like it dealt four damage, gained four life. But that was it. You know, couldn't block. Um, for a three drop, only dealing four damage, honestly, is not that much. You know, like while well, I'm just like overrunning it with creatures and Embercleave and stuff. I would say I was really disappointed with the, the Clothis. I think I think Clothis was the worst card in the deck. I wouldn't I wouldn't really play them anymore. Tiktotin Giant. Also, for how for how fast our deck is, Tectonic Giant wasn't as good. But the matchups that were the reason why it wasn't as good also because the the three matchups that were like the last three matchups that we're playing were all races. And when you're just playing a matchup that's a race, they don't really have to um, use a removal spell on Tectonic Giant. And like when you're playing matchups that, that are races, you really want creatures with haste more. Tectonic Giant's gonna be really good against removal heavy decks or just even just slower mid-range decks like that are just trying to play defense and and uh let you you know like attack and get that extra card and all that kind of stuff like where it's not just a race where you just need just haste creatures because they gum up the board um well, those weren't the matchups they were facing and then you know then we also played a, against a, a can a control deck with a bunch of wraths where tectonic giant isn't the best either so we didn't really get to show off the power of tectonic giant with the matchups that we had but clothis just didn't feel like a very good card and that's disappointing uh phoenix was awesome ox looked pretty decent ox ox is really going to be better in uh in like spell heavy decks with like a like a lot of cheap spells but it's still pretty decent um I think if they're just like, I'd rather just have an, another goblin, another another goblin, and another spellbreaker instead of these clothuses uh, in the main deck. Um, let's see, it's like another spellbreaker goblin, and then uh, whoops, and then sideboard. Um, sideboard did seem like we need some stuff for for the decks that go wide. Um, like Hydra was pretty good, but I'm not sure, sure if it would just be better as Flame Sweep. Because we're Hydra, we want to play Hydra. We want to play against small creature decks. Uh, you could also have what's the the four mana one? Uh, storm. Maybe you want like one Storm's Wrath, honestly, for like other like Gruel decks and other fast aggro decks. That you just get them with a Storm's Wrath and then play your creatures afterwards, kind of thing. Maybe want like because flame sweep just doesn't kill a whole lot of stuff. I think I'd probably want that like one flame sweep, one storm's wrath. 
The coils were good. I like those. Yeah, as far okay, so as far as how to build a Clothis deck then, I think maybe just not an, an all in aggressive deck. You want because Clothis Okay, so think about what it does. It does at your upkeep, like let's just say the two damage. It does two damage to them, you gain two life. That's not very much for one turn, but if you can just do that over a long period of time, that's where it really shines. If you can keep on doing two, gain two, and so on over a long period of time. This deck doesn't want to play long games. So you have a card that like wants to play a long game in a deck that doesn't want to play long games, and they just don't mix well together. So as far as building a Clothis deck, I think you actually want to play a Gruul deck that wants to play a long game. So you want to play a deck with like more removal and maybe more um, permanence that uh, that can um, turn on the devotion part, but maybe aren't just like haste creatures. You know, so maybe like other planeswalkers and enchantments um and artifacts and stuff like that like where you want to play a long grindy game so the, so so basically like a gruel deck um you know probably like more of a, a card draw gruel, gruel deck probably something with like Setessian champion that you're maybe going like with the enchantment stuff um where you're playing uh let's go back over to the i don't remember the name of all these cards so you're playing like nessian wanderer Setessian Champion, Dryad. I think if you're playing like these kind of cards in a gruel, like in a gruel deck, um, like where you know you're hitting lots of land drops, playing to a late game, playing defensive cards, you know one threes and two fours and stuff like that, and a Rasta, and you know it's also an, so you basically kind of play a deck like that, and it's an enchantment. So whether that's Naya, um, yeah, so that could be Naya. So you have a Calyx that can find it and stuff like that. That could also be Jund. Could be a Jund deck where you use black enchantments for removal. I'm not sure like what other... You know, like red enchantments they'll give you. You know, like, okay, so you have like the Omen of the Forge. So that's also removal. And you would maybe be able to like use, you know, late game like when you have tons th that could actually be a pretty decent underworld breach deck also because you you get to play a lot of lands because the the two drop gets you all the extra lands and then the dryad lets you play more lands um that could be like an underworld breach deck that for a late game thing when you have all the mana as we're talking like people are asking about like some kind of late game effect So I don't know. That's those are things to think about. It could be in a Crow and War deck, um, help you get in in the late game. But who? Mirror March. Mirror March is fun. Yeah, Naya with Planar Cleansing. Cloth is indestructible. I mean, it's tough tough to uh, play triple white in Naya, but you know that can happen. Um. Yeah. So there we go. So that's uh that's what we learned today with Gruel Aggro. Good stuff. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, uh, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. Um, you know, just let me know what you think about this Gruel deck and uh, the sideboard with Phoenix in particular that I really like, but then also Ox and Tectonic Giant over here. And also, if you have a, a cool Clothis deck, you know, feel free to, to leave those comments of how you are using them. All right, but that's it here for Gruel Aggro. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.